Now comes one of my favorite parts, the build. So I consider this a test build. Now I get to see how my plane goes together, but I also get to see how my build plans work. Are they going to translate well to an easy build? And I found out fairly quickly that there were some things I, I needed to change in the build plans. I didn't have things put together in a way that made sense, which, which is fine because you don't know until you try it. Going into this, I knew that I was going to have to make a few more adjustments to the build, things that I, I wasn't ready to decide on until I made the aircraft and got to that point. Things like, how am I going to attach the wings? I know they're going to be removable, which means I'm probably going to use rubber bands of some sort. I was going to have to make something for the rubber bands to attach to. The canopy, the canopy is removable. I hadn't thought yet on how it's gonna stay on the plane, but I, I knew I was gonna save it for the build. I built most of the fuselage, and the first big problem I had was with the elevator. I had two independently moving elevators on my plane, and I knew this from the design. I just didn't realize that it was not a responsible choice to make for this plane. I didn't think there was enough room to make the cutout in the tail to account for the sweep of a single moving elevator. I quickly found out I had to think of a way to make these move in unison. I didn't want them to move independently at all. After a few attempts, I mean, I tried connecting two push rods to the same hole in the control arm of a servo. I tried using two servos that were connected by a Y harness. And in both attempts, I found out that both elevators didn't move exactly the same. So I wasn't confident that this was going to be an easy fix and I wasn't confident that this was going to be a responsible choice to put into my build plans and my build. I went back to the 3D model and I made it to where the elevator was one surface. I made a cutout in the side of the tail and I had to build the plane again because at this point I already built the nose, the center body, and the tail. And I wasn't, I wasn't mad that I had to redo it because there was some warping and twisting and some things I hadn't tried out yet. I also had to figure out where the servos were going to go. I didn't plan that out ahead of time. So here it is, the final product. Um, I'll address the paint job first. I used a Red Bull color scheme, and you might be wondering why the blue is a little lighter. The reason is because I drink sugar-free Red Bull, which has the lighter blue in the can. So I based it off of the color scheme of the sugar-free Red Bull. I put a 1000 kV motor with a 10 by 4.5 prop on it. This piece here that's not painted was something I added recently to to help streamline the nose because before the nose was just this open hole that went straight into the body of the plane and I thought that that might be causing a little too much drag. So I quickly made a piece and it's just taped on right now. I still have to test it. The plane is put together in five major sections. So I have the nose, which is this piece. And then from here back to here, where the silver ends, is the center body. This piece is the canopy. And then, of course, I have the tail section from here back, and then the wings. Those are all built separately. So let's start by taking the canopy off. The canopy is just held on by a barbecue skewer that goes through both sides. Um, these popsicle sticks here are something I put on to help straighten out the body a little bit. Note to self, don't store your foam board in a way that lets it warp like I did. I bought the case of waterproof foam board a while ago from Flight Test, and I set it under my desk and didn't use it for quite a while, but it was on its side and leaning against the wall. So that warped every sheet in that box, and when I was putting this plane together, that warping translated to the body, so it was twisted a little bit. So I put these popsicle sticks on the side of the canopy to actually keep the tail straight with it. But this comes off here, and I put two more popsicle sticks through this plate here, and they're glued to the side walls. I drilled holes through them, of course lining them up with these holes, and that's what the barbecue skewers go through, and it's pretty strong. The canopy has popsicle sticks here. They don't look very good because I had to make some modifications to make sure that they fit right. But these popsicle sticks actually go into the nose and grab onto a dowel I have glued across there. I'll show you that a little later. But this was, I did this in five pieces, but now the build plans I think have it in two, where the bottom plate, which is all one piece during the build, and then you have to cut it out to make room for the wings. The bottom plate is attached to um, these side pieces. So on both sides I have these pieces here that include these folds. And the last piece is just basically the spine of the, 
the spine of the canopy and then the top and this piece here is all attached to one piece. These folds are very simple. They're actually just score cuts that I ran a barbecue skewer through to crease it and then I just fold them over and hold them in place. I used a lot of formers to keep the shape. So we'll talk about, we'll talk about the way the wings are held on. So I used rubber bands to hold the wings on because I wanted them to be removable. I have a lot of room inside the fuselage, but I, I put the Velcro here because this is where I'm going to attach my battery. Fortunately, after the build, the center of gravity of the plane without any electronics in it was actually about right here in the front of the wing, which was great because that meant I could put my battery basically on the wing. Um, center of gravity is another thing I want to talk about. One of the more frustrating parts of this was that. Where do I put the center of gravity? I know the general rule of thumb is you put it one-third of the cord length behind the leading edge, the cord length being the distance from the leading edge to trailing edge. Obviously that, that is going to change as I go down the swing because I put a sweep on the inner portion of the swing. It may be a little easier on a straight wing, but on this one, if I go a third of the way, I'm, I'm about right here. So then I have a center of gravity that translates this way. I didn't want to use that method. I used um, instead the method of the mean aerodynamic cord, which is basically you take the shape of your wing, you draw a line equal to the length of the cord at the tip of the wing, in front and behind the cord, in front and behind the root of the wing, and then you take a line equal to the length of the cord at the root and draw it in front and behind at the tip of the wing. Connect the ends of those lines with two straight lines, and where they cross is the point where, where your mean aerodynamic cord is. I think mine was about right here. So now that line is the one I can use to say, okay, my CG will be a third of the distance behind that line. So my CG is actually right here, is where I placed it. And it worked out pretty well. The wing's built in four sections. If I just do the half of the wing, you have the intersection here and the outer section here. The intersection has sweep on it, something I wanted to try and see what would happen. The outer section is not swept, it's straight. This wasn't too bad. Um, I have two spars in here. Two spars start here and then they come together and meet here at the root. I also made it a varying thickness. The wing is thicker at the root than it is here at the middle. So this, the inner portion of the wing is the only one that changes in thickness. The outer portion is the same thickness. That wasn't too difficult. The just varying thickness in the actual spar is what helped me do that. I have a symmetric airfoil. It's the same on the top as it is on the bottom. And I have very thin spars in here. And these spars don't do too much for strength. They do a little bit because they're glued to the, the top and bottom surfaces and they will prevent it from bending. But that's not a big deal because I have a symmetric airfoil. I have twice as many folds in the wing. And these folds actually do act as spars. They increase the strength of the wing and help it resist bending. To get the trailing edge to meet, I had to make um, I had to make some very shallow bevels in the edges here, and then I took a sanding block and sanded them flat, so that way the trailing edge makes more of a, of a point instead of the thickness of two sheets of foam board. I used uh, two popsicle sticks, you might recognize that, that's so the rubber band doesn't cut into the wing. The way the wings are joined is tape and glue. I used a piece of tape in the middle here on the bottom, put glue, held it together, and taped it over. Same thing with where the wings join, piece of tape on the bottom, glue in the joint, held it together, and then when the glue dried, I put tape over it. Ailerons aren't too big. I think I drew them initially. They were too here. I didn't want to make them that big, but they're simple. I also stopped the fold of the airfoil for the trailing edge, which I didn't put a bevel in these edges. They just normally meet together at their, at their thickness. The servo wires just run along here and they come out through a tiny hole in the middle. I use the tape with the fibers in it on the bottom to act as another spar. The body's fairly simple. It's actually pretty empty too, but I have all my wires. My, my servos for my, my rudder and my elevator are in here. There's one about right here and the other one is here. <laughs> There's my, my cutout for my, uh, my elevator, which turned out to not be that big of a deal. I have these slots that go farther than, that go farther than the cord length of the horizontal stabilizer, and they even go farther back here. That's 
I, I had to make those cutouts in order to get this piece to fit through. So that's, that's something I probably have to work on figuring out. The reason I couldn't just slide it in is because the vertical stabilizer in here actually runs along a groove I cut in the bottom. So it angles downward and I can't just connect these two pieces, which by the way, the vertical stabilizer fits over the horizontal stabilizer. I couldn't put that in as one piece. I had to put the vertical stabilizer in first and then I had to make these cutouts to fit the horizontal stabilizer through. I built the center fuselage first. It doesn't really have any formers in it. I just held it together with formers that I did make, but I didn't leave them in. I used a lot of formers that didn't stay. Um, they were just there to help me train the aircraft to keep its position. But again, most of the folds are those score cut folds. I made score cuts in parts of the, the foam board and then ran a barbecue skew through them to score them more and just folded them and held them in place. I had to do a lot of bevels on the edges where the three sections fit together. The back of the center body is actually this piece here, it goes down and then comes forward this way. And then you have the tail meets with the center body here. It's a little weird and awkward, but I had to make bevels on these pieces so that they would fit in here nicely. I also had to bevel the edge here so that it would sit flat on top of this piece. The nose had similar issues. The nose and center body joint kind of goes along this line here. These jagged edges are kind of awkward, but they were necessary to keep the shape right. They didn't cause as many problems as I thought they would. I had to put bevels on them as well. I made the cutouts for the wings. This, this used to have one big plate that helped me form the center fuselage, and it's actually the same piece that's on the canopy. Um, I, of course, I cut it out so the wings can fit in here. In order to hold these rubber bands in, I have these dowels. I cut out these small squares out of foam board, probably about one and a half inches by one and a half inches. I used three of them for each dowel, there's four here. And I put the dowel through all three, glued it all together, and of course make sure the dowel isn't too long because if the dowel is too long and the rubber band gets farther out in the end, it's a lot more force trying to pull it off. These dowels, by the way, are quarter inch diameter dowels. You could buy them at a craft store or even at a hardware store. I did that on the back and on the front with the canopy, those popsicle sticks actually grab onto this dowel. It's held on the same way these are, only this runs the entire width. The motor sits on a plate that actually is glued along the sides here and it's the same width as the nose as you're looking down. It probably goes about this far back and on top of that plate is basically a tiny power pod. Um, it's not removable, I made it to where it doesn't, doesn't move at all. I glued it in, I actually had to, after my first test flight, I actually had to make it more sturdy because it was too movable. And actually, as a matter of fact, my thrust angle was off, which was causing problems, but I'll talk about that later. I also closed up some more holes. I have an opening on the bottom below the motor where air can go over the ESC, which the ESC is actually sitting about right here. That air can go over the ESC, come out. I made a cutout on the bottom here for the air to escape. That's something I really probably should have done before my first test flight. 